curious case of Paul Papa. I'm going to try to see what this is. Everyone seems to have smiles on the faces. Oh, where we go? This is Paul Pogba. He's a decent player. Actually, he's more than that. Pretty Based good, on eh? pure talent alone, Pogba is in a category of professional footballer and all-round athlete that we very rarely see nowadays. The height, mm -hmm. the flair, the touch, the strength, he's got it all. And on top of all of that, he seems like a genuinely good dude. Despite this, depending on who you ask, the man should be tried for war crimes. Paul Pogba. I see him dancing at a wedding. I see him shooting hoops. We can't, we can't shooting just criticize hoops. Paul Pogba when he's not playing, Graham. No. He says he's shooting hoops like he's fucking murdering someone. Oh, but he needs to stop Hoops. We can't, we can't just criticize Paul Pogba when he's not playing, no. Graham. <laughs> he's consistently hot and cold, labeled as lazy more often than not, and he gives crazy statements to the media pretty frequently. I mean, just a few weeks ago, he essentially stated that he uses the national team as a source of stress relief for Man United. The case of Paul Pogba is an interesting one. At the moment, we're at an interesting crossroads in his career. He's 29, he's and for all the reasons above and for all the hype surrounding him in his early days, you would think that he would have achieved more than he has yes, by that event isn't very interesting. Okay, this was funny. Let's do it. But he hasn't. Today, we're going to dive into the world of Paul Pogba to unravel his journey up to this point and hopefully mm. understand what's really going on here. With that being said, what's going on with Paul Pogba? What's going on, guys? Hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another video. If you wouldn't mind, you uh, you see that thing down there? It's like a. Yeah, Born in Paris in 1993, Paul Pogba is the youngest of three, with his siblings yeah. being not only twins, but also one of the hard not to like these guys, yeah. One of them threatened him with allegations of a witch doctor or something. So football crazy. He was actually Hasn't an Arsenal so fan growing up, which really shouldn't surprise me because so. crazy. He was actually an Arsenal fan growing up, which really shouldn't surprise anyone because, you know. In any oh, case, yeah. before long, it was evident that he would go far in football. Strong and full of technique from a young age, he made his way through several teams before eventually finding himself at Le Havre at 14 years of age in 2007. Oh, However, That's come 2009 and we were faced with one of the first sets of controversy that would surround this man over his career. With Pogba making all the headlines in his youth, it was only natural that big clubs would come out of the woodworks requesting his signature. Manchester oh, United too. were one of them. However, United were accused of being a tad too eager and not within the boundaries of the law in their pursuit of the <laughs> Frenchman. They were accused of tapping him up, which is negotiating a transfer with the player without the consent of their contracted club. This is not allowed, which is why United denied ever doing so. They even went as far as threatening to sue Le Havre if they kept alleging this clearly fabricated story. And they were even cleared of wrongdoing by FIFA to back up their case. Now, what's so ironic about this situation is that Le Havre, the club that vehemently fought to unveil the unethical nature of Paul Pogba's move to England, had themselves been accused of acquiring Pogba, the same player, by bypassing the correct channels. I mean, at this point, I struggle to believe that anyone that actually watches football believes that the vast majority of transfers aren't conducted in a similar fashion, particularly when it comes to youth players. Anyway, now a Man United player, he continued to improve, and by 2011, he had won the FA Youth Cup and was primed to be integrated into the first team. An 18-year-old Pogba had finally come of age, and with United desperately in need of midfield reinforcements, now was his time, is what he was probably thinking at the time. He was wrong. New Year's Eve 2011 Manchester United vs Blackburn Rovers. This was the day when Pogba learnt that life with United was not going to go as he had originally planned. As I said, United were lacking cover in the midfield and they were in the middle of a heated title race against City. In Pogba's own words, when I had the chance to play or to come on against Blackburn, that's when I had heartbreak. There was no midfield there. People were injured, Scholes wasn't there, I think he'd retired already and it was before he came back. Raphael played in the midfield with Yi Sung Park and I didn't come on in this game. We lost the game. He had essentially seen enough and more or less began the process of focusing his attention elsewhere where he might get more opportunities. And by the end of the season, he was on the move with the destination being Juventus on a free transfer. 
Ferguson was not impressed, citing his impatience and I guess how mm-hmm. Pogba conducted himself as the reason why. It is disappointing. I don't think he showed us any respect at all, to be honest. I'm quite happy that if players carry on that way, they're probably better doing it away from us. Sometime later, in Sir Alex Ferguson's book, Leading, he went on to state that one of the main reasons for Pogba's messy departure was his agent at the time, yeah. Mino Raiola. I distrusted him from the moment I met him. It was Ferguson's opinion that he had infiltrated the Pogba household and essentially poisoned yeah. his mind against the club in search of money. That's wild stuff. In any case, regardless of how it turned out, Pogba was probably right to leave. Let's be real, he wasn't going to be given minutes, or at least he wasn't going to be given the minutes that he was after. Sir Alex Ferguson even called Paul Scholes out of retirement to help with the midfield issue. Moving to Juventus was the best thing that could have happened to his career, and very arguably, it still is. One free transfer later, and here we are. This is where things really began to turn around for him. A lot of Premier League and Man United fans knew he was talented, but because he was no longer in the league, they had kind of forgotten about him. But he was making a lot of noise. He became a starter for Juventus almost immediately, and Pogba HD skills and goals compilations became a pretty common YouTube compilation title. Playing in various midfield arrangements alongside the likes of Andrea Pirlo, Claudio Marchisio, Arturo Vidal, and Sami Khedira, Pogba was left to embody the role of a true number 8, a Metsala. Playing as a wide central midfielder, drifting in and out of central areas. He did defend and put in the yards, but he was always more attack minded than not, something extremely yeah. evident by the numbers and performances he was putting up during his four year stay in Turin. Here's a quick breakdown of Paul Pogba's numbers and accolades at Juve. 178 appearances, including 37 in his first year. That alone shows you how good this move was for his development. 34 goals, 40 assists, and an average of 2.3 tackles per game with 2.4 dribbles completed per game. 4 Scudetti, 2 Coppa Italias, 2 Supercoppa Italianas, 2,000 haircuts, and 1 billion dabs per capita. Okay, okay, I made those last two up. It was probably more than that. He also won the 2014 Golden Boy Award and was named the best young player in the 2014 World Cup. By 2016, Pogba was on top of the world and he could essentially choose where he wanted to play football next. Little did everyone know, he was actually on loan to Juventus from United. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? The the kind of loan where you let a team have your play for free and then you have to pay £89 million to get them back. I'm kidding. That's ridiculous. I meant Pog back. Right, so Pog was finally back at United, but there were some changes. The skills and tricks were still there, albeit more limited than before. After all, he had just stepped into a Mourinho team and was being played in a more reserved role than he was accustomed to, typically in a double pivot with less license to attack as he didn't have the luxury of a tireless destroyer to cover for him anymore. Nonetheless, he was seemingly adapting quite well, and even though he received- I do wonder how he- Criticism for his positional and situational awareness, he had the full support of his manager who claimed that football Einsteins were too quick to judge him. His first season back was a little rocky, but it was still pretty good considering he was playing in a new system. And seeing as United won two pieces of silverware that year with him scoring in one of the finals, it was still tangible hope that he would push on to fulfill his potential. The Europa League and the League Cup. Not the most prestigious competitions out there, but Silverware is silverware, and when you're Man United post Ferguson, you take what you can get. And the 17-18 season wasn't too bad either. 16 goal contributions as United finished the season off in second place to City. But all the same, as we all know, numbers very rarely tell the full story. This year was plagued with injuries, suspensions, and omissions from the squad amidst a growing rift with Mourinho. These are just the normal ups and downs of a star player, so it's nothing too out of the ordinary, I guess. But what you have to remember is that when you come into a club like Man United as the most costly player on the planet, the criticism will come in from every single direction. Throw in his carefree personality off the pitch and the fact that his agent was allegedly offering him up to rival clubs while all of this was happening, and this guy was perhaps the most targeted player in the league at the time. 
This takes us through to the 2018 World Cup, where Pogba shone bright for France. A trophy at the end of it, great performances, as well as the surfacing of a couple of shoddily recorded locker room pep talks from the World Cup, gave United fans a lot of hope for what this man was capable of and what was still to come. After all, at this point, he was only 25. He was handed the captaincy when he returned to Old Trafford in place of the absent Antonio Valencia at the start of the season. But uh, when Valencia returned from injury, Pogba was stripped of his vice captaincy reportedly due to attitude problems. Things were bad. Based on everything that was being leaked and reported at the time, the relationship these two had at the time was less than non-existent. From being labelled as a virus to being seen visibly annoyed with one another in training after Mourinho disapproved of one of Pogba's Instagram posts following a defeat. All of it was a mess. Since then, in a recent 2022 interview, Pogba has openly admitted that he went through what he firmly believed to be depression due to all the tension between him and the former United coach. Which really puts into perspective something that we often forget, but something that I always try to reaffirm on this channel. Yes, these guys are millionaire athletes that are essentially living the dream, but they're people too. All of this stuff does affect them. Having said that, from a purely footballing perspective, Pogba was not playing well for United at all at yeah. the time. He was wildly inconsistent and couldn't really be counted on to give a good performance. And that was probably due to a number of reasons, some of which I've already mentioned. The system they played in, the players around him, the manager, his mental state, none of it was clicking. Let's also not forget the blatant racism that he has to deal with on the regular. Three seasons into his anticipated United return that he hadn't really left a mark at all. And that's not even counting anything that was going on in his personal life that we aren't privy to. You can obviously make the argument that everyone has issues and other players go through similar things like this and still perform. I agree. But at the same time, it doesn't hurt to at least attempt to try and give a bit of context in situations like this. You know. Anyway, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer coming in, Pogba went on to have his best season in a United shirt from a statistical perspective. 13 goals in the league, more than any other midfielder that season bar Eden Hazard, who I guess we can loosely put in the midfield category for that year, and 9 assists. But again, the numbers don't tell the full story. And I say this because yeah. fast forward to 2022 and injuries, illness, poor form, laziness on the pitch if I'm being honest, as well as a spat of ill discipline have all limited his game time and continued his patchy form. One day he's getting four assists in one match and showcasing yeah. that one of a kind flair, the next he's two footing people for no reason. It's frustrating. Which brings us to today. His United career is likely coming to a close and who knows if he's going to find success elsewhere. I've been hopeful that he'd come right to United. Have the I was one of those dudes days. that was watching those YouTube compilations years ago thinking that he was going to take over the world, the but it didn't happen. And that's a shame. Of course it's worth noting that Man United is a literal dumpster fire and has been ever since Ferguson left. So Pogba is not solely to blame, yeah. but it is what it is. All the same, he's a World Cup winner and yeah. hasn't had a dreadful career by any means. But it could have been more, you know? I rate he still has a few good years left, so hopefully things do come right for him at club level eventually. Anyway, that's where we're going to leave this one. What do you guys all think about Paul Pogba? You think he's underrated? Overrated? Where do you think he's going to be playing football next year? Feel free to leave all your thoughts in the comments below. Anyway, that's all for me today. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Wishing you a great day ahead and I'll catch you I mean, next you week. Just knew that Bayern would be this is quite bang average. And then Pogba is going to improve that obviously. So, let's see how the rest of the season goes and see how it's back for me today. Tell me a video there.